how do we talk to these as cards. Just like the contact cards we had at t equals 0, t equals 1 here, t equals CL, contact level, contactless. So when you've, uh, a card has been presented, you don't know what type of reader, ooh, I've got a reader, ooh, I've got a card, uh, that will tell you what type of card you're actually uh, dealing with, if you need to know. Next, another good topic is near field communication. I mentioned the, the radio waves, that we're, we're talking to a card, you've got a, uh, you could call it a client and server, where the reader is the client, the card server, or, and if you go further down, you've basically got two devices that are talking by radio. And that's where near field communication comes in. These two things to uh, talk by radio, you can also have other things talk by radio. For instance, this, if this was a phone, I could have, I could have a phone pretending to be a smart card, or actually being a, a to all intents and purposes, a smart card. So I could put the, the phone on, and this thing say, all oh, right, you're talking, uh, you're talking radio waves according to the, uh, the specs, right, I can, I can deal with you. So near field communication, there's a, a opens up a wide opportunity of using different types of devices that can one day look, you know, well, minute for minute, uh, look like a phone, uh, one minute, look like a Bluetooth device, another minute, and look like a smart card, uh, contact a smart card, another minute. And also, um, so phones will eventually include NFC, so that means that the phones could also swap it around. The phone be able to read your card. So imagine that uh, uh, if you've seen um, uh, the, the Snapple website where you can recharge a card, or if you've been to a, um, a dairy and you can recharge a card, uh, the day will come when you can use your phone to recharge a card. At the moment, most phones don't have near field communication. It's just like Bluetooth, it was just a few, it's a few dollars to add uh, to each device, but in a cutthroat market, there's got to be, that ex there's got to be a, a groundswell before the manufacturers will include NFC. So what we're wanting from the developers is that killer app on the phone that makes all the phone manufacturers say, I've got to have NFC on my phone. And NFC also includes RFID. If you think of uh, all the times you've been, uh, um, you've gone out of a shop and somebody, somebody um, has uh, stuck their hand on your shoulder and there's a big bleeping uh, tags on uh, produce. That's done by RFID. Also a lot of um, uh, security systems where you've got a little dongle going into your building. RFID uses uh, near field communication. <coughs> So, major types of cards. We're talking over a 40 year, uh, 30, 40 year period. What has happened? Well, we're really going back to uh, 1982 when we've got the first uh, contact uh, smart cards. But what people now talk about when we're talking about the, um, the smart cards are the contactless ones that are used in major cities for transport. And the MyFair Classic is the most widely used card worldwide. So you've got Oyster, you've got uh, uh, the uh, octopus, you've got the various systems around the world which are all using uh, the MyFair Classic. Now if you want to talk to, about equivalents, RFID, all that does is says, hello, I'm a, a bag of peas, or hello, I'm some fish fingers. All it can do is just announce itself and you've got to look up code and work out what it is. That's like a CD-ROM. All it can do is tell you what's already on there. When you get to the MyFair Classic cards, ASIC, Application Specific Integrated Circuit, they are memory. So that is like your USB memory stick. We've, we've stepped up a notch, we can now read and write. And there's a bit of um, authentication in there, so you can't just uh, write any old data to the card. Well, you can if you've done the groundwork and you know where to get the keys from. But my, so my fair has been broken. If uh, uh, the keys are, um, are, are out there, if you know where to look. But they, all they are are memory cards. They don't have any... Um, application logic in there. If somebody says, write this data to this card, that's what it'll do. It, it doesn't know, uh, what, um, it doesn't have any information about what that data means. That's why they're able to use MyFair Classic cards in so many different systems. Then the, the next step up we're going to is Java smart cards. Now, not many people talk about 8-bit CPUs these days, you know, we talk about 64 bits or whatever, but still, 8-bit CPUs, they are used in Java smart cards. We want a low power device. They, these uh, devices, basically the 8051, they stretch back 30 years again in terms of their instruction sets and things. But 
So we've got a standard instruction set, we've got a standard language, Java, oh, put them together, and we've got a Java smart card. But these things are still pretty limited. You don't have um, uh, they cut down the Java language, you don't have uh, memory allocation, you don't have a garbage collection, you don't have some of the, the longer data types, so they have a simplified data set. But it means you can uh, code your, if you've got a client server system, you can code both sides in Java. So you can share uh, portions of code between the two. And also, you can have the same developers working on both clients and server. You've got um, a lot of skills sharing there. Then the next step up is I've got JCOP, which is the Java Card Open Platform. So lots of people uh, say you can write Java on, on these cards, and that's absolutely right. You have what you need is a special uh, compiler which will co compile down to the uh, to the code that that specific card will use. But what the open platform is saying is, ah, oh, what we can do is put a standard layer, and if you write your applet or cardlet or servlet or whatever you want to call it, if you write it to this API, you can throw it onto any any JCOP combined card. Then the next step is global platform, which succeeds open platform. And what they say is, right, well you've got these standard applications that can run on a, on a standard, effectively an operating system on card. What we're now going to let you do is have multiple applications on the same card, and you can add and remove those applications. So if you've got a smart card that is global platform compliant, you can take that card and you can say to the bank, ah, oh, I hear you do smart cards now, well I don't have to buy a smart card from you, you can put your application onto my smart card, and then go to your phone company and do exactly the same. So, so, so you're cutting down all those 20 cards that you have in your wallet down to one card, because you can have different applications all sitting in secure silos within the same card. Communication. So you've got a card, you want to talk to it, you want it to get it to do stuff, you want to tell it, you want it to tell you about what it is, and you want to tell it to do stuff. So we have the application protocol data unit. Before I talked about contactless cards and contact cards, one was straight electrical connections, the other's radio waves, then they go up to, oh this one's serial, oh, this one's packet. Right, now we're at the APDU level. From the from the programmer's point of view, if I can get APDUs in, in and out of the car, then I can talk to anything. And I don't care what kind of form factor it is. And again, we have standards. To, and where uh, an APDU uh, looks like that. That looks a bit like gibberish, but it basically says uh, class, instance, parameter 1, parameter 2, length of data, and then length of the reply expected. And all responses give you two bytes. And if you get it wrong, it tells you, no, I didn't understand that or otherwise you get a stamp code saying, yes, I know what you meant. For the different types of cards, you have to do a bit of uh, jewelry pokery. For the early cards, they were limited in that only the request or the response contained data, not, not both. And so, to deal with that, you do have to do some extra checking of, of the status, where the status may say, that was great, but you have to ask me again to get the reply back. So, but you have to deal with that, but you can deal with that at one level, and then you put your application above that where that's still handled in a common layer. So, I want to program a card. As I said, Java with, uh, with restrictions, basically it's trying to simplify the Java language. The card, um, it's a smart card, but it, but it isn't uh, einstein -y. It's got a limited capability, so we simplify the Java language, but it is still the same language. But you can't use uh, certain data types, and you can't create new objects, you can't create new things um, on the fly, but you can define all of the things, and those get, will then get uh, loaded up onto the card. And so that's what a black card looks like. I've uh, scribbled on it to stop it looking like, like a bank card, but basically a white piece of plastic with the contacts, and it's saying, hello, write an application to me. And you can do that. There's, there's nobody stopping you do that. That is, you go and buy the blank cards, you get the readers, you can download an application that you write onto a card. So, by the card systems, I mean that you've got an application on the card, or you've got pre-existing cards where you know how to talk to them. What, what are the card systems that, are gonna, that those cards are going to be used for?